award-winning news team, Lynn Brooks, Terry Brewer, Weather with Richard Scott, and Sports with Gary Harris. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I am Terry Brewer. We begin tonight with a look at your chilly weather. We've had some very chilly nights all week. Could we be in store for another night of freezing temperatures? WVOA Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott joins us now for a first look at this cold weather. Hey there, Richard. Hey, Terry Lynn, good Wednesday evening to you. Going to be cold again tonight. We tried to warm up for a change this afternoon, but it's getting colder uh, by the minute out there. We'll check out the temperature map across the southeast. In fact, uh, we've got 60s and 50s on the board now for uh, Birmingham back at the 50s now. Uh, 53 Birmingham, 59 Tuscaloosa, 50 in Atlanta. And yes, yeah, getting pretty chilly tonight. Not as cold as the last night, but you'll notice that certainly a, a temperature drop off there. The back edge of the clouds starting to move through now. And as skies clear out, that's going to allow temperatures to cool off faster, I think, later on tonight. So here's that forecast talking 44 by mi uh, 10 o'clock tonight, midnight 41. But how cold will it get tonight? How about your weekend forecast? Will it get any warmer? Your forecast straight ahead. Stick around. All right, thank you, Richard. The Salvation Army is working to help people stay warm through these fall and winter months. And you have a chance to help. Volunteers have already started receiving blankets for the cold season, and their Kettle and Angel Tree campaigns are also underway. Representatives say their goal this year is to make sure all 2,700 kids are sponsored. That's about three times the amount of kids that were in the program last year. Administrative Pastor Captain Dean Moret says it's all about the community coming together to help each other. We're all one community, and it doesn't make any difference uh, if you have a house or whether you don't have a house. You, everybody needs a place, a warm place to stay at night, and, and we think it's so important. And uh, the Salvation Army is committed to rebuilding their homeless shelter, but it's going to take some time uh, to recuperate from the, uh, from the storms. The Angel Tree is up at University Mall, and you can find kettles in front of Walgreens, Big Lots, and Winn-Dixie stores. New faces are not the only changes happening to the Tuscaloosa County Commission. Changes are also coming to meeting times. The Tuscaloosa County Commission voted unanimously this morning to continue to hold meetings the first and third Wednesday of each month, but the times of the meetings will change for a six-month trial period. The first Wednesday meeting will be held at 9 a.m. and the third Wednesday meeting will be held at 4 p.m. Commissioners say this will help Tuscaloosa County residents be a part of decisions for their county. We want to do what's best for the citizens of Tuscaloosa County so they can be more informed and know what's going on with their county government because that's what the government's all about is people. The commissioners discussed ways to televise the meetings and also how to create a more detailed website to allow easier access to information for residents. Now that the election season is behind us, you may be wondering what to do with all those campaign signs. Well, here's the answer. Tuscaloosa Environmental Services says you can bring your campaign signs to them. Officials say those signs are recyclable and they can be put to good use. According to Ashley Bordeaux with Environmental Services, even though the city ordinance required them to be removed, removed yesterday, it is not too late to bring in yours. Okay, Lord, have a good day. Election season is officially over, so a lot of people have some extra campaign signs that are probably going in the garbage. But, un but fortunately, people can still recycle. They can recycle their campaign signs with us here. Environmental Services will also be running a Thanksgiving and Christmas campaign for all the excess garbage and live Christmas trees. On your Crime Watch, investigators need your help. You may have that missing piece of information investigators need to catch a suspect. Here's this week's Tuscaloosa County's Most Wanted. I'm Chief Deputy Ron Abernathy with Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, and thanks to your help and WVUA, we have capture number 451. James Bruce Beams, captured for sex offender act. Jason Tubbs, captured for rape second. Dwight Edwards Jr., captured for burglary second. Christopher Harden, captured for unlawful manufacturing of controlled substance. And Jeremy Dumas, captured for robbery second degree. Now we need your help locating more of Tuscaloosa County's most wanted. Carlos Glenn Mack. Black male, 37 years of age, 5'10", 165 pounds, black hair, brown eyes, last known to be living in the area of Moody Street, Tuscaloosa, 
wanted for attempted murder, menacing, and reckless endangerment. Cornelius Antoine Washington, black male, 26 years of age, 5'10", 170 pounds, black hair, brown eyes, last known to be living in the 32nd Avenue area of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, wanted for robbery, second degree, burglary, third degree, and fraudulent use of a credit card. Cynthia Lee Smith, white female, 47 years of age, 5'1", 160 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes, last known to be living in the 22,000 block of Gregory Drive, McCalla, wanted for violation of the Community Notification Act. If you have any information on these or others wanted by the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, please contact us at 464-8672 or go to our website at www.tcsoal.org. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Working together, we will continue to make Tuscaloosa County a safer place to live. Thank you. If you've driven down Skyland Boulevard in Tuscaloosa lately, you may have noticed some changes going on near McFarland Mall. That's right, because a new restaurant is on its way up. The Cheddar's restaurant chain will soon open a location close to Chili's on Skyland Boulevard near McFarland Mall. Tuscaloosa City Council approved a request yesterday for waterline constructions on the side of the restaurant. The opening date has yet to be released. Attention Tuscaloosa dog lovers, you're invited to discuss ideas for a local leafless dog park. That event is being organized by T-Town Unleashed. These are pictures of the proposed site. The meeting is being held at the church at Tuscaloosa starting on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Everyone is invited. T-Town Unleashed is working with the para on this project and they want to hear some community input before they begin construction. Organizer Kimberly Conway says this project will help unify dogs and their owners. One of my main goals is unifying and sharing ideas. So getting the dogs out of the house and their owners as well, which um, you know, brings people together, which builds healthier communities. Conway says donations are critical to the project's construction. You can learn more about helping T-Town Unleashed on our website, wvoatv.com. Click numbers and links. And now a special programming note to pass along to you. Bama just about a week away from its biggest in-state rival game, Auburn University. Yeah, of course. The Iron Bowl is set for Saturday, November 24th, but you don't have to wait that long to get your fix of Alabama football. Alabama's home team will have special coverage all week long of the Iron Bowl. And on Wednesday, November 21st, going to want to mark your calendar. Don't miss our Iron Bowl special that's right here on WVUA TV at 530.